the history of photography. The slideshow is going to be a bit more in depth than the slideshow we looked at as a class. I am going to go through the slideshow and read it to you. So um, here goes. We're going to start with the definition. Starting with photographs. Sorry about this. Photographs preserve personal memories and inform us of public events. They provide a means of identification and of glamorization. They provide us with views of far off places on earth and in space as well as microscopic scenes from inside and outside the human body. Many specialized commercial categories, including fashion, product and architectural photos, also fit under the broad umbrella that defines photography's function in the world today. The view. To, to the mid 19th century, observers to mid 19th century observers, photography seemed capable of capturing the world whole rather than describing and interpreting it as drawing did. They called it the mirror with a memory. Dr. Oliver Wendell Holmes, who coined the phrase mirror with a memory. But 20th century critics have argued whether photography is indeed a direct trace of experience, like the mark of a footprint in the sand, or instead a reflection of the photographer's particular point of view. Photography's role in the visual arts is also a matter of debate. From the start, photographer's camera was seen as a challenger to the painter's brush. Its ability to effort, effortlessly render tones, detail, and perspective effectively put an end to the practice of certain forms of painting, such as portrait miniatures. It is believed today that photography creates an impetus for painters to forsake straightforward de description in favor of more interpretive or abstract styles such as impressionism, cubism, and abstract expression. Gifanti. Before mentioning the stages that led to the development of photography, there is one amazing, quite uncanny prediction made by a man called De La Roche, 1729 to 1774, in a work called Gavanti. In this imaginary tale, it was possible to capture images from nature on a canvas which had been coated with a sticky substance. This surface, so the tale goes, would not only provide a mirror image on the sticky canvas, but would remain on it. After it had been dried in the dark, the image would remain permanent. The author would not have known how prophetic this tale would be only a few decades after his death. Now we're on to the development of photography. Photography is derived from Greek words photos, which means light, and graphian, which means to draw. The word was first used by the scientist Sir John F. W. Herschel in 1839. It is a method of recording images by the action of light or related radiation on a sensitive material. Camera Obscura. The camera obscura developed out of a simple lensless pinhole camera, which was used perhaps a thousand years ago to project an image of the sun and safely view eclipses. The incor incorporation of a lens in the 17th century, or maybe even earlier, produced a much brighter image and the cam camera obscura as we know it today was born. The camera obscura is based on a simple principle. If you go into a dark room, thus the name, the Latin camera, room, and obscura, dark, and punch a small hole in the wall, the image outside will be projected inside. Light from only one part of the scene will pass through the hole and strike a specific part of 
the back wall. The production is made on paper on which the artist can then copy the image if desired. The principle of the camera obscura can be demonstrated with a rudimentary type, just a box with a hole in one side. During the Victorian era, many seaside resorts had a camera obscura, which was usually set up in a small oct octagonal building near the beach or on a pier. Inside, the visitor could watch a moving color picture of the view outside. There is speculation that Vermeer used a camera obscura for his paintings. Photography as a usable process goes back to the 1820s with the development of chemical photography. The first permanent photograph was an image produced in 1826 by the French inventor Nicéphore Niepce. However, the picture took eight hours to expose, so he went about trying to find a new process. Here is the image of the earliest surviving photograph from 1826. This image did require eight hour exposure, which in, resulted in sunlight being visible on both sides of the building. Daguerreotypes, working in conjunction with Louis Daguerre, they experimented with silver compounds based on a Johann Heinrich Schultz discovery in 1724 that a silver and chalk mixture darkens when exposed to light. This is the first daguerreotype photo. Neopis died in 1833, but Daguerre continued the work, eventually culminating with the development of the daguerreotype in 1839, reducing exposure time down to only half an hour. The daguerreotype plate was made by brazing or coating a copper plate with silver, silver being the photographic emulsion. The image was able to capture very fine, rich detail, superb even by today's standards. The technique is still reproduced by devotees today. The low-cost daguerreotype became so popular that by the end of 1839, Paris newspapers were referring to the new disease to a new disease called daguerreotypomania. People were by far the most common photographic subjects of the 19th century. Photographic portraits were much less expensive than painted ones, took less of the sitter's time and described individual faces with uncanny accuracy. So great was the sense of presence in these pictures that phot photographers were often called to take portraits of the recently deceased deceased, a genre now known as post-mortem portraits. The daguerreotype process, though good, was expensive and each picture was a once-only affair. That, to many, would not have been regarded as a disadvantage. It meant that the owner of the portrait could be certain that he had a piece of art that could not be duplicated. If, however, two copies were required, the only way of copying with this was to use two cameras side by side. There was therefore a growing need for a means of copying pictures which daguerreotypes could never satisfy. Different and in a sense a rival to the daguerreotype was the calliotype, invented by William Henry Fox Talbot, which was to provide the answer to that problem. The calliotype ne negative provided the first practical method of producing prints on paper from a camera exposure. The earliest paper negative we know of was produced in August 1835. It depicts the now famous window at Lecoq Abbey, his home, his home, I'm sorry. The negative was small, only one inch square and poor in quality compared with the striking images produced by the daguerreotype process. However, the great advantage of Talbot's method was that an unlimited number of positive prints could be made. In 1840, Talbot had made some significant improvements, and by 1844, he was able to bring out, of, out a photographically illustrated book entitled The Pencil of Nature. Interest in daguerreotypes dwindled in Europe after 1851 when English photographer Frederick Scott Archer in 
prevented the collidian or wet plate process. This was a negative to positive process, but because the negatives were made of smooth glass rather than paper, the collidian pro process produced, produced much sharper images. Using the Collidian method, French painter and photographer Adolf de Sideri in 1854 invented the carte de visite, a form of photographic calling card which soon became the new rage. Photographs using the collection or wet place process hauled their large cameras tripods and portable darkrooms to the furthest reaches of Europe's imperial quest in the years between 1850 and 1870. The Civil War in the United States, 1861 to 1865, was the first war to be thoroughly recorded by photography. As industrialization came to define Western life in the 19th century, industry employed photography to portray its successes and strengths. For example, in 1857, British photographer Robert Hewlett took pictures of the British steamship Great Eastern, the largest vessel of its day. In addition to recording the construction of railroads, ships, buildings, and bridges. Photography proved useful to medicine and the social sciences. Doctors wanted before and after pictures of wounded Civil War soldiers to study the effects of amputation and invasive surgery. Psychologists studied photographs of mental patients in an attempt to visually discern their disorders. Photographers recorded the features of criminals not only as a means of identification, but also in an effort to identify physical characteristics which criminologists then believed might correspond with criminal behavior. The development of faster cameras in the 1870s spurred scientists to other and others to use photography in the study of human and animal movement. In 1878, Moore Bridge used a series of photographs of a galloping horse to demonstrate to the world that the animal lifts all four feet off the ground at once. French physiologist Etienne Jules Marais also followed Moore Bridge example and devised a special camera to record sequ sequential photographs on a single plate. The resulting photograph showed an echoing trail of images that re recorded the subject's movement in both time and space. Murray used this method to develop insights into the flight of birds, human movement, and the working, workings of the human eye. In the last quarter of the 19th century, the camera helped record the plight of the dispossessed, displaced, and overlooked. One of the earliest attempts to document urban poverty was made by Scottish photographer Thomas Annan, who aimed his camera at the empty, unsanitary alleyways of Glasgow in 1868. City officials commissioned Annan's documentation to justify replacement of Glasgow's unsavory slums, slums with new development. As photography celebrated its 50th anniversary in 1889, the average person was familiar with what photographs look like and probably kept some at home, but few people took photographs themselves. In addition, most photographs exi existed as unique originals because copies were still difficult to make. All this soon changed as a result of two important in introductions, the simple to use Kodak camera and the halftone printing process. The mainstreaming. The use of photographic film was pioneered by George Eastman, who started manufacturing paper film in 1885 before switching to celluloid in 1889. His first camera, which he called the Kodak, was first offered for sale in 1888. It was a very simple box camera with a fixed focus lens and single shutter speed, which along with its relatively low price appealed to the uh, average consumer. The Kodak came preloaded with enough film for 100 exposures and needed to be sent back to the factory for processing and reloading when the roll was finished.
In 1900, Eastman took mass market photography one step further with the Brownie, a simple and very inexpensive box camera that introduced the concept of the snapshot. The Brownie was extremely popular and various models remained on sale until the 1960s. The snapshot, originally a hunting term for shooting from the hip. hip. The snapshot expanded photography's territory to include casual family scenes, candid views of everyday life, and instantaneous images that stopped motion in midair. The photographs of Frenchman Jacques-Henri Latrigue, who became, began taking snap, snapshots at the age of six, best exemplify, exemplify this in this snapshot taken when he was 10. His teenage cousin appears suspended over a flight of stairs, miraculously posing for the camera in the middle of her flying leap. 35 millimeter. As early as 1905, Oscar Barnack had the idea of reducing the format of negatives and then enlarging the photographs after they had been exposed. As development manager at Leica, he was able to put his theory into practice. He took an instrument for taking exposure samples for cinema film and turned it into the world's first 35 millimeter camera, the Leica. The cultural impact. <clears throat> As the technology for reproducing photographs improved in the first decade of the 20th century, a new world of images began to make the world seem smaller and its manufactured goods more desirable, along with motion pictures, which the Lumiere brothers of France introduced to the world in 1895, photographs and reproduction led to the new concepts of celebrity, culture, advertising, and entertainment, all of which depended on the availability of a mass audience. <clears throat> One example of new visual culture provided by photochemical reproduction is the birth of picture magazines, so-called because their contents were defi defined as much by photographs as by text. National Geographic magazine became hugely popular, popular because of its, its exotic photographs from around the world. It was one of the first publications to use color photography. Fashion photography developed along, the new, along with new picture magazines. Confined at first to studio portraits of society women in their finery, it turned, oops, sorry. It turned professional models and professional photographers <clears throat> to enliven images and entice the reader. The new approach to photography in the editorial content of magazines was matched by increasing increasingly sophisticated use of photography and advertisements. Photography played a significant part in Dada and surrealism art, art movements that encompassed literature and theater as well as painting and sculpture. Dada art, artists in Germany, such as John Hartfield, developed a form of nonsensical photo collage around 1920, using it to express dissatisfaction with social convention and to satirize government and institutions. Hurrah, the but butter is gone. John Hartfield, 1935. This image is another example of how photo montage has been used to make sharp and often satirical political points. John Hartfield, a German, a German, produced this picture in response to a comment by Hermann Göring during the food shortages in Nazi Germany. Göring said, iron has always made a country strong. Butter and lard only make people fat. By picturing a family under the Nazi regi regime eating an iron bicycle, Hartfield sat satirizes and shows the foolishness of Göring's comment and in general, the Nazis regime disregard for, ba for the basic needs of its people. In Paris, surrealists such as American expatriate Monray saw photography as an avenue to the subconscious or into a world beyond, rea beyond reality. The digital, digital photography 
digital camera technology is dire directly related to and evolved from the same technology that recorded television images. In 1986, Kodak scientists invented the world's first megapixel sensor capable of recording 1.4 million pixels that could reproduce a five by seven inch, di inch digital photo quality print. Today, the technology, technology is massively advanced with high resolution cameras, even incorporated. Come on, I'm sorry. Even incorporated as commonplace in, mo in mobile, phone, mobile phones. Digital manipulation of images. Doctoring photographs has been around almost as long as photography itself, but as digital imaging hardware and software has both advanced and come down in price, the practice of digital image manipulation has become much more commonplace and faked photos are becoming harder to detect. In fact, digital photo manipulation, commonly referred to as photoshopping, has recently become as a popular pastime and many consider this photographic fakery to be a new art form. But when it works right, its Farrell, way into in photojournalism the office, and right, the media, <clears throat> but when it works its way into photojournalism and the media, the issue of ethics comes to the forefront. How far can we take digital image manipulation and still maintain photographic integrity? Franklin Wyndham to the main office, please. Franklin Wyndham to the main office. Today, photography remains a vital and inextricable part of contemporary art, as well as retaining its commercial and more everyday uses. The invention of various digital means of making, altering, and transmitting images has thus far failed to curtail interest in traditional methods of picture making nor has technology lessened the faith most people have in the documentary truth of photographs. The assignment. Okay, photographers like writers express themselves through their own voice or vision. Each person has their own unique view of the world and is reflected in their photo photography. You will choose one photographer from the list. If you, when you click here, you'll see the list to do research project on. Pay careful attention to the quality, view, and perspective of the photographer's work, both literally and figuratively as you search research this person. You have a choice on how to present your information from your research. You may create a Google slideshow, use Prezi, write a report on Google Doc, on a Google Doc, produce a video, Powtoon is, an e is easy to use, or design a board on discovery.com. If you need help with any of these, types of presentation software, let me know. You must include graphics, photos, pictures in your project. If you are doing a slideshow, video, or a board on discovery education, you must take time to design it with an appealing look. You must include detailed information about the photographer, photographer's introduction, photographer, I don't know why that's, introduction that includes why you choose this person, life, a short biography, inspiration uh, and how they got started, their work in voice vision, what they are, are in, why they are inspirational, what they contributed to photography. What have you learned from their work? You will have to give an oral presentation of your work. You will turn in your work by providing a website URL link on Canvas. If you're doing a Google slideshow, you must use the share link for Warren County. Please do not just copy and paste the link at the top of the browser. The assignment, this assignment is worth 100 points. Do your best work. Okay, so that's the it for this video. I, I apologize for the background noise. I'm recording this in the morning, um, but go ahead and pick your person and get started. And if you need help, please let me know.